Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. And in this episode of Red Giant TV, we are going to explore the exciting world of amplitude mapping in Trap Code Mirror. Now I know what you're thinking. My God, that does sound exciting. And it is. So let's get started. So here I am in After Effects with Trap Code Mirror already applied. And, you know, if I made a couple of changes to the settings, I've changed uh, some of the amplitude and frequency settings. But I really just want you to get a look at this. This is your standard fare for Trap Code Mirror. If you've watched any of the videos or you've seen any of the tutorials, you know that you can get stuff that looks uh, something like this, a little bit of terrain -y like stuff. And it's, it's pretty cool, actually, what you can do with it. And... The deal is that Trap Code Mirror uses a fractal mapping system to create all of these bumps. If you've ever used fractal noise in After Effects, and we'll look at it in a moment anyway, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. So these are just really interesting. It's a grayscale image that has dark areas and light areas, and it creates this bumpy looking uh, terrain like object. Okay, now this is all fine and dandy, but what if you want some control over where these bumps appear on your polygon mesh? Well, to answer that, we've got something called amplitude layers. That is, you can use an image to control where bumps will appear on this polygon mesh. I know it sounds very technologically blah 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 so let me just show you visually what I'm talking about. I've got a comp here, and in it I've got a black and white image. It's just a, uh, a star. It's really a shape layer that I've got, and uh, a black solid. And I'm going to use this to control where the bumps appear on my polygon mesh. The white area will be the area where it appears and the black will be where there are no bumps. And if you had grays, you could have something in between. So let's take a quick look. Jumping back into my comp here, um, I've got my mirror layer and I'm going to tell it to use this star map, which by the way is in here, but turned off, um, so you don't need to see it. And with mirror selected, I'm gonna tell it to use as an amplitude layer, we'll use my star map. Well, look at that. Now you can control where these bumps up here. It's pretty cool. And let me just uh, kind of pull in a little bit here. And so, as you can see, it's a star. And uh, it doesn't have to just be a shape. We can also use, I'll jump into here, and I can say, why don't I just use some text? And now we jump back here, and we'll see that that's what it looks like, which is pretty cool. If I were to use, uh, for the background image, let's say we were to make this black solid Let's try something a little less than black, right? Let's say we go with a gray that's just a little bit more, not, not quite 50%, but somewhere near that. I'll click OK, jump back into my main comp. As you can see, we do have some terrain look to the rest of the polygon mesh, but where we have our white areas, that's where it's strongest. So let's just, uh, again, rotate so you can see what's going on. It's pretty cool. And it doesn't end there, because you can use amplitude maps to completely control the look of Trap Code Mirror. In other words, you can bypass the fractal noise that's happening under the hood and use your own black and white imagery to control the entire look. So, for example, in this case, while this might look the same as what you were looking at before, I'm actually using a basic fractal here to control uh, the noise. And this is basically fractal noise effect applied in After Effects, which is one of my favorite effects because it's so powerful and has so many different uses. So take a look. One of the best things about fractal noise is that you can evolve it over time, right? So you can change the look over time. But more than that, you can also, in the evolution options, you can cycle that evolution over as much time as you want to do it. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, uh, tell it to evolve over time, let's just go for uh, up to one second here. I'll set it on one complete revolution at one second. So it's gone around 360 degrees. I'll tell it to cycle that evolution over one revolution, which means that when it comes back around, let's take a look. The first and the last frame look exactly the same. That means that if I come back here into my looping fractal composition, which I'm just working in, I do a RAM preview. So you can see that it's animating now because I'm animating that map but more to the point it's looping so you can create a looping animation using fractal noise as your amplitude layer but it's really important to note a couple of things and how I did this the first is that I have my amplitude set up and I'm also again only using amplitude Z but my frequency is set to zero this is really important again amplitude set to a number that raises things off that raises the bumps off of the polygon mesh again and the amplitude is using our amplitude layer so it's using that black and white image we just looked at the frequency needs to be set to zero because so if we bring the frequency up it's going to mix its own fractal noise with 
hours. Now, you could keep that up there. It won't uh, stop it from looping, but it may not be the look that you want. So I've got amplitude up, frequency down. I've got my amplitude X, Y, and Z are all set to numbers X and Y being zero and amplitude Z bringing the number that helps uh, bring this up or down. But that's the important stuff to make this happen. And of course, you have to have your basic, uh, your, your fractal noise or whatever map you're using as an amplitude layer. Really important to note is if you're applying fractal noise to a solid and you try using that as your amplitude layer, Trap Code Mirror will not see the fractal noise. It'll only see the solid. So you need to pre-compose, which is why I built a composition with just one layer and that is the fractal noise. Now, if you thought that was cool, I am about to rock your world because you probably know that with fractal noise, you can do a lot more than just create these blobby shapes, especially if you watched a tutorial that I did, quick tip number 15. It's been pretty popular on Red Giant TV, and it's about creating the look of a city with trap code form. Well, it kind of translates over here into trap code mirror, but much, much cooler. So, just to give you a quick idea, one of the things in Fractal Noise that you can do is you can change it from uh, noise type from linear or soft or spline. You can change it to block. Now, this look is not going to give us the look we want because if I jump back into my uh, looping fractal comp, there's so much uh, complexity to this map, you're really not getting what I want to show you. It does look different and it does look interesting. But let's take a look at something else. I've built an amplitude map, which I'm going to use to create the look of a city. Pretty much knew what I was doing ahead of time, but you know, experimentation is really important here in getting the look that you want. So a couple of things had to happen, and there's a couple of different effects on here. And let me just shut stuff off and show you what I've got. Starting with fractal noise, I've got simple square shapes or almost squares, and the noise type is set to block to create that look. Also, I'm scaling the width and height to get just the size that I need, and for complexity, I've got it set down to one. Any higher amount of complexity, and we're going to start having noise, and it's going to create a very noisy look to our city, which is not something we want. So, jumping into a composition where I'm using this as an amplitude map, you can see that I get something that looks really interesting. Now, it doesn't really look like a city, but it is pretty cool, especially if you consider that this can be animated uh, the same way that we just talked about using fractal noise. So, pretty cool, but not what I want. So, let's jump back into my amplitude composition here and what I'll do is I'll also add in this grid effect now this is just a black grid and again taking control and the, probably the most important thing to note here is that the blending mode is set to normal not none which is by default where it's at uh, which would then look like this so we're gonna set this back to normal and it adds it on top of the fractal noise that we've got and I jump back into my composition and this is starting to look a lot more like a city you know you take a look you can see that um, We've got streets, we've got avenues, looking pretty cool. Now, it's never going to pass any tests for realism, but it certainly will look good on an interface or on some kind of cool motion graphic that you're trying to create. So, something to think about. Furthermore, and this is where it really gets interesting, is you can also influence it through controlling the brightness of the amplitude map. So, coming back here, um, I'm, instead of using brightness and contrast, I'm going to use the tint effect. And the tint effect is just, I'm telling it to turn all of the blacks from the fractal noise into light grays. Now this changes the look, jumping back into our city. Um, we no longer have low buildings, which we did before, because the black areas were the low ones. And if we jump back again here, without the tint effect on, you can see that there's a lot more darker areas. So this helps raise them up. I can turn this on and I can also control the amount of tint. So I can animate this over time. So if I were going to set this uh, down to zero, and then over a second, set this up to 100%, we'll see the influence. So let's take a quick look. All right, pretty cool. Um, and of course, you can also animate the amplitude uh, values here in Trap Code Mirror. So let's just take a quick look here, and let's set my amplitude down, you know, from nothing, I can set it down to zero. And uh, we'll make a keyframe on this first frame. And we'll move down to one second. And we'll bring it up to 100. And over time, you can see that we've built a city. And in fact, we've got two different animations going on because we're building that and we're also at the same time animating the, the tint right here. 
So a couple different things that you can do, and you can try lots of other cool things to create different effects. Um, do your own animated amplitude maps if you want. So here's an example of that. I've got a composition here where I'm using trap code sound keys to control the opacity of six different squares based on the level of volume in the audio. So take a look. Right? So again, let me just turn off the layers that have trap code sound keys applied, and we'll just look at how they're influencing these white squares to be opaque. Right? So you can see how that's working. And I'm going to use these squares to control the amplitude of our trap code mirror layer. So let's take a look. Now, I'm not going to get into sound keys here and how it works, and I'm not going to walk you through this entire project. But as you can see, we've got the extrusions going on on our polygon mesh using those squares based on how opaque they got. You know, if it's, if it's black, then it's going to be all the way down, and if it's white, it's going to be all the way up. So take a look. Pretty cool. It needs some work. Some more I have to do to make this really look good, but I think it gives a pretty good example of what you can do. And just to finish things up, I wanted to show you that if you get really creative with some of the settings in Trap Code Mirror, using even just the map that I just showed you of the city, you can create some really interesting things. Take a look at this, and I've just done some creative bending here. My, uh, you know, if we take a look at this, just the amount of bend that we're using, right? Um, and again, I can open this up or close it out, right? So you can see that's just that map being influenced in this way. And again, using just some interesting bending and playing around with the amplitude. Uh, and again, that city map, I've gone uh, and created this interesting thing here. It looks like a little bit like a city in the sky, if you wanted to go that way. And I actually just used the same techniques to create this spaceship for a really cool animation that I recently posted. And um, really what's going on here is there's uh, a repeater. So if I set my instances to one, you can see that there's this is what the shape looked like. And then I just used uh, two instances and I rotated it. So again, you know, it was just basically like having having a second a copy that intersected it to create an interesting looking ship. And uh, this is what the final animation looked like. It's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I was pretty amazed that I could, in After Effects, just create stuff that used to take me forever to do in Maya um, and Cinema 4D because, you know, you had to go from those programs to After Effects. So it's pretty cool. Amplitude mapping really allows you to do some interesting stuff and hopefully it will help you in the work that you do. Hey, don't forget, you can download a free trial version of all the software that we used in this tutorial on redgiantsoftware.com. You can also get lots of free products at redgiantsoftware.com. So we go over here in our products tab right here and just head over to free products. Lots of cool stuff, uh, including uh, Magic Bullet Quick Looks free, Magic Bullet Colorista free, Magic Bullet LUT Buddy, and more. And for some stuff that you maybe did not know about Red Giant is we also have a bunch of iOS apps, including the brand new Magic Bullet Arsenal, which is an awesome portfolio app for the iPad, which makes it very easy for you to share your work with other people. And uh, something else you might not know about Red Giant is that all of our products come with something called our Red Pledge Guarantee. And this is our promise of no hassles, just happiness. It includes a whole bunch of stuff, including a 30-day money-back guarantee, one price for all host apps, and free support check it out on redgiantsoftware.com. You know what? And honestly, as much as I am just getting tired about talking about how much we love you guys, I wanted to talk about Red Giant People, which is our website full of free presets. Lots of cool stuff, uh, presets to use with our products. And, uh, you know, you check them out and there's just a download and that's, man, it's awesome. I love this place. Anyway, hope that all of this stuff helps you in your work. Keep up with us on Twitter, Facebook, or on our blog. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for Red Giant.